just laid out the differences that you see in the Trump administration rules and, and the new ones that you guys have announced. But a lot of migrant advocate groups don't see it that way. They see this as mirroring the Trump era rules. So what do you say to these migrant advocate groups uh, and, and these communities who now feel very much betrayed by this president? Look, here's the thing. We don't see anybody else providing any other solutions when it comes to Congress. We don't. We've provided solution after solution. The president, again, on day one, provided a, a comprehensive reform, immigration reform proposal. Put it out there on the first day. Republicans have rejected it. And so we are trying to put forward a way to move forward with an immigration policy that, that secures our border, that is safe, and that is humane. And what are they providing? Nothing. And so one of the things that we can say, and we see this uh, in the data, is that we have increased pathways uh, to uh, uh, pathways to uh, legal pathways, we expanded that, and we see that it's working. Uh, again, no one else is providing any other options. So what we're doing, the Department of Homeland Security, the president is using the tools that we have in order to deal with this issue. I'm going to take one in the back. Uh, go ahead, Ed. Yeah, thanks, Green. Uh, so one quick clarification I wanted to ask you about. Um, so on the sanctions, do those third-party countries attempting to evade our sanctions that you talked about at the top, does that include China, Chinese companies? I'm just not going to get ahead of any announcement that's right. going to happen so tomorrow. The, the president has been traveling the world uh, pledging to help other countries solve their energy issues. The latest one was with Poland uh, pledging to build power plants or help them build power plants. How come there's no pivot in energy in, uh, energy policy here at home uh, to help the inflation that we're seeing here? Uh, have you read the Inflation Reduction Act? Uh, yeah, so energy, I mean, the Inflation Reduction no, the inflation energy. Reduction Act does just that. Inflation Reduction Act actually helps lower cost, uh, energy costs, and gives Americans a little breathing room, which is part of the President's economic policy. If you think about what he has said for the past two years, which is making sure that we have an economy that works for everyone, build it from the bottom up, middle out. And the Inflation Reduction Act is so important because it deals with energy policy, lowering the cost, because it deals with health care things that, uh, that is incredibly important to Americans across the country, especially our seniors, making sure that we're capping at $2,000 for medical, uh, medicals, uh, uh, medical drug costs. That is important. So yes, the president has been talking about this and dealing with it in a real way. And we're seeing that his economic policy is working. The Inflation Reduction Act, not only that it does it lower costs when it comes to health care and energy, but it's also going to lower the deficit by $200 billion, something else that the president cares about uh, when it comes to making sure that we are not uh, adding to our deficit. And that shows how fiscally responsible this president is. I got to keep going. Go ahead, April. Yeah. Welcome. She said April. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. no sorry, Michael. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Two questions, Corrine, real fast. Going back to East Palestine. Um, you say that the uh, federal government is going to hold Norfolk Southern, Southern accountable. But what is the long-term commitment from the federal government as it relates to the residents there when it comes to the water, when it comes to the soil, and when it comes to the air? We're going to be there to assist the East, East Palestine, Palestine uh, community for as long as it takes. That's what the president said. Uh, we're going to be there to assist uh, for as long as it takes. And that's what you will see from, uh, from this president. And it's not the first time. Any time there is uh, some sort of devastating uh, event, you have heard the president say that over and over. That, and he has actually kept to his word uh, over the last two years. And so that's what you're going to see. And when you look at what uh, the chemical was, the toxin can be uh, evidence itself. Evidence itself years later. Will the federal government be there that long? As long as you, it takes, as you say, um, just watching. Well, as you know, there's an investigation going on uh, at this moment, so we're going to let that investigation uh, continue. Uh, but, you know, we're going to assist uh, for as long as it takes. We're going to make sure that the company uh, cleans up, uh, pays for the cleanup, pays for the work that the EPA uh, uh, is doing currently right now. That's what you heard from Administrator Regan. And, uh, and we're going to, you know, we're going to be consistent and stick to that. And you heard from the NTSB today with their initial, uh, initial finding uh, to tell us what what happened, but we still don't know the why. And last question. Um, there seems to be uh, more activity from a lot of groups who are very upset with what Ron DeSantis is doing when it comes to uh, cutting off the AP courses on African American history. With that said, um, I'm sure this White House has talked about it, but is the president 
talking to uh, Secretary of Education, Secretary Cordona, about what steps can be done to rally other states to make sure that education is that teaching facts. So as you know, when it comes to education and making sure uh our, our children are getting what they need uh, in the classroom, the education that they so deserve. That is something that's important to the president. He always talks about how the first lady is an educator, and clearly uh, it's something personal to him and to the first lady. I do not have uh, any specific conversation to read out about what's currently happening uh, with uh, in, happening in Florida. Uh, and uh, I know you've heard me talk about it. You've heard others uh, from the administration speak to uh, what we're seeing currently on the ground. Uh, but I don't have any specific conversation that is in, that is uh, specific to policies or anything that's being done, uh, but clearly uh, making sure that our children uh, get the education that they so deserve uh, is certainly important to this president. I'm going to take another, I'm gonna, okay. I know, I know, okay. I'm going to take one, I'm going to, go ahead, Alex, in the back. Oh, hey, 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 no, right. Alex, I'm sorry, I was calling Alex. Oh, no, thank you. Uh, yeah. uh, Karine, um, we're seeing violence escalate um, in the mid Middle East, and um, I, I know the, I think we all know the president's stated position on Israeli security and Palestinian statehood, but what can this administration do right now from, you know, to keep that from spiraling out of control? So let me just speak to the most uh, recent violence that we have seen in Israel. I know my colleagues uh, at, um, at the State Department spoke to this yesterday, and I just want to reiterate because I think it's important uh, for us to re reiterate from here at the podium. We are, you know, we're tracking uh, the Israeli raid in Nablus very closely and mourn the loss of civilian lives. We hope for the speedy recovery uh, of those injured. While we recognize the very real security concerns facing Israel and the West Bank and Gaza, uh, we are extremely concerned by the ongoing violence. Uh, we urge Israel and Palestinian Authority to protect against further loss of civilian life. Uh, yesterday's events further underscore the urgent need for both sides to take steps uh, that de-escalate tensions, prevent further loss of civilian life, and work together to improve the security situation uh, in the West Bank. And that's what we think we need to be doing together. Uh, one thing I do want to uh, just uh, read out a little bit here, the National Security Council Coordinator for the Middle East and North Africa, Brett McGurk, is currently in in, uh, in the middle in the middle east middle east north africa region with an interagency delegation for a series of diplomatic engagements his trip will include stops in uh, in egypt jordan oman uae and, and we don't we don't have anything further to preview on this engagement at this time but this is something clearly that we take very seriously you know secretary blinken was uh, in the region recently uh, and so uh, again we're going to um, uh, continue uh, to to call out the concerns that we're seeing uh, and um, and I'll just leave it there for now. All right, guys, thank you so much. Does the president have a response on the Catholic bishop murdered in California?